think we are ready to move on to our main topic. And this is, uh, let me give uh, some forewarning to this. This was not, this was just became the main topic the other day. So I haven't had much time to explore this. Uh, but I am uh, so stoked to, to find out about it. And this is what I owe my thanks to uh, Greg Hartwick for bringing this to my attention because I would have overlooked it. Uh, Greg Hartwick is always sending me amazing bug stuff on Twitter to talk about on my show. Uh, a lot of the, you know, keeping up on the, the topics and stuff. Uh, it's very, very uh, fan driven, support driven. So feel free to always send me things if you want me to identify things. I'm thinking about doing a section um, maybe where I can, I, or maybe even doing a separate little show where I identify some different stuff that people see, have sent to me. Maybe uh, once a month, I'll collect a whole bunch of uh, creatures that someone sent, that people have sent to me, and, and go through an ID them. That could be fun. But uh, what what I had planned on for this is actually what I did was move that off into uh, investing fiction, which we'll get to directly after. But our main topic is going to be. Uh, about a new discovery. So in 2018, there was a, uh, a dig, an archeological dig, archeological dig, not archeological dig, paleontological dig in the Burgess Shale. Now I did a video about the Burgess Shale, put a lot of, uh, a lot of work into it. So if you haven't watched it yet, go check it out. Uh, it was about the discovery of the Burgess Shale and how much we learned from it uh, and all the, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, tens of thousands, I believe it was, fossils that, that uh, Wolcott uh, discovered when he discovered the shale. Uh, but this one, uh, Titanocoris gainitsi, uh, it's brand new. It, it, it's a novel species. When they discovered it in 2018, uh, but it's took a while for, uh, for the, the research to get published. This is, this is something that was published on the 8th. So this is fresh off the presses. Um, it's 506 million years old, uh, based on the shale that it was discovered. And this is the Burgess shale in the Canadian Rockies. Um, so here's some 506 million years ago, a predator swept over the silt bottoms of the Cambrian ocean. It's rake like feeding arms sifted through the murk it raised funnel so funneling soft bodied worms into its puckering circular mouth. So it was a predator. It was a huge predator um, for its time. It was, uh, I believe that we have the length at, so the fossil itself was 19 inches long. It was part of the carapace, uh, the, the shell, the, the big uh, single shell part that you see there on the animal in this video. The, let's see, how big was it? So I want to say it was, they said 56 centimeters, which is huge for an animal at this time. So because for my American friends, uh, a ruler, 12 inch ruler is about 30 centimeters. So a 12 inch ruler, about 30, hold on, let me pull myself back up. 12 inch ruler is about 30 centimeters. So 56 centimeters is going to be a rule about a ruler and a half and then yeah just a little bit longer than that so it's it's huge for the time period where most things are you know smaller than your than your fingernail um but uh there were other larger or longer uh anomalocaris is what comes to mind that lived during this time period but not quite as robust as this big sucker in 2018, a team of paleontologists from the Royal Ontario Museum discovered the preserved shell of the ancient hunter during a fossil hunting expedition in the Canadian Rockies. Now, before I get too far in here, this is I'm reading this from the New York Times, um, written by Asher Elmine. Okay, where were we? Okay, on Wednesday, in the Journal of Royal Society Open Science, the team identified the 19-inch animal which they named uh, Titanocoris gainiensi as one of the earliest known large predators on Earth. Gainesi, I think it is. Titanocoris gainesi. At the time, m when most animals were the size of your little finger, 
this would have been a very large predator, probably near the top of the food chain, said Joe Moisuk, a PhD student at the University of Toronto and co-author of the study. Titanocories belongs, belonged at the time when it was first recognizable ecosystems were taking shape. After half a billion years ago, quite a garden of Edocarin large fully developed soft-bodied organisms feeding on microbial mats they just vanished as the first predator let's see here yeah as the first predatory animals evolved ecosystems grew more complex and many of the major animal groups that still live today appeared for the first time a geological turnover called the cambrian explosion now to uh, clarify on this uh Cambrian explosion was a period of 50 million years. It wasn't just boom, all of a sudden there's all this biodiversity and we don't know how it happened. It, it, they, they evolved over 50 million years. And when you consider the uh, life cycles of a, uh, these early arthropods and invertebrates, it's not surprising that they diversified that quickly because they only lived, you know, some species of uh, of microbes only live you know, six hours and have a six hour life cycle. So evolution among that clade is going to happen much, much quicker. And we're going to actually be able to watch it in real time. That's why short lived organisms like fruit flies are so uh, important to our uh, helping us understand evolution. The Ediacarans a period before the, the Cambrian. So uh, it was more recently discovered that there was the soft-bodied organisms. Uh, they're discovered from Lagerstaden too, from shale. So they're well preserved and we know that these uh, uh, these ecosystems existed before the Cambrian explosion. We know that microbial mats covered most of the seafloor uh, prior and it was actually uh, uh, acorn worms uh, and penis worms that, uh, that drove uh, the extinction of the microbial mats and thus the Edicar and uh, life forms vanished and left left the the niches open for them to be taken over by this diversity this menagerie of uh, early Cambrian life that uh, started to appear over that 50 million year period and diversify and we have monsters like this guy and uh, Anomalocaris that just totally uh, dominated for so long uh then of course when the cambrian came to an end we you know see survivors uh even our ancestors survived but these uh monstrous creatures did not uh so when we find something like this it's adding another piece to a puzzle and this is a big piece of the puzzle because this is a uh, uh what we would call an apex predator for the, the, the time period. So nothing's preying on it. It's not uh, going to be eaten by anything else, at least not why it's alive, but it is going to be able to eat just about anything in its environment. Now, whereas Anomalocaris was a, uh, had structures that indicate that it was a raptorial feeder, that it uh, fed kind of like a squid floating in the water column and grabbed uh, food with his raptorial arms, this guy was more of a active pursuit predator. It would have been digging through the mud, uh, stirring up creatures and shoving them into its mouth uh, for consumption. So a little bit different feeding style. Uh, and this may or may not uh, have been the most massive of uh, Cambrian life forms. Uh, again, Nomalocaris was a, a little bit longer with its reptoil arms. But that's not to say that more information won't come out. Uh, more discoveries might be made. Uh, new, uh, you know, a new perspective on the fossils that we found. A lot of things could uh, change the way this animal is viewed. It's very novel at this time. You know, just two years of research behind it. But I'm glad that someone put together this animation that could play while I ramble about it. Because I was super stoked when Greg... Uh, when Greg showed me this uh, this organism. So thank you, Greg. Uh, thank you for uh, shifting my main topic. I'm glad we were able to uh, look at this new discovery together.